Hello everybody, welcome to the Tuesday live stream. And I know that uh, I was reading the comments before we went live. I know some people will take a look at that thumbnail and the title and they'll take a look and say, this is not really good news, so what are we here to expect? First of all, before we get into the news about why this is a red day, what could potentially happen in the future, I just have to bring you back a little bit and just give you some perspective. So first of all, the market is down. I think we all know that. We all woke up and took a look at our portfolios or maybe on CoinGecko or CoinGecko and say, hey, wow, look at that. Bitcoin's uh, almost about to tumble below 60,000. Hey, it is what it is. Remember, we're in the crypto market. We're not in traditional finance. These are the days, 4%, 5%, 10%. Call that a Tuesday. And uh, this is coming to fruition. Ethereum's down, Tether, well, Tether's Tether, BNB, Solana, and everything else. So before we get into like the news is, you know, why this is happening, check this out. Remember, it's not all bad. So this, I'm not a big TA guy, but I was just perusing to take a look at just how things were going over time. And as a reminder, like this is, today we're looking at uh, April uh, 30th. So we're probably gonna close out in a pretty negative month. However, if we take a look back, and these are the monthly candles, again, monthly candles on September, to October, second month, third month, fourth month, fifth month, and look at February, sixth month, seventh month, look at that. You started down here at around 25,000. You are now still above, well, actually, now you're down here, I should say that. You are around 60,000. And if you, oh, look at that, you probably did drop below, 59,683. So seven straight months of going straight up, you went from, you doubled your money if you were dollar cost averaging. And uh, there is bound to be a pullback. Nothing goes up forever. So just remember, seven months is pretty good. And then, of course, we have one month that is uh, not so good, which is all par for the course. And actually, I want to take a look real quick. If we can change this over to the currency, which would be Bitcoin. How's everything else doing against Bitcoin itself? Well, Tether's Tether, USDC. Ton coins up 1.2. Tron is up for some reason, I guess. Uh, let's see. No, a bunch of stable coins. That's about it. So again, it's one of those things where we know that uh, the gains for Bitcoin aren't as massive. However, things are a little bit safer as time goes on. Anyhow, that's what we have for just the markets itself. And this is part of the reason why. And this is from a uh, friend of the show, Guy, over at Coin Bureau. And he states out, uh, this was this morning when I woke up around 10 o'clock. It's like two hours ago. He goes, the numbers are in for the first day of Bitcoin ETF trading in Hong Kong. Total volumes were $11 million versus the market expectation of 100 million. So it did roughly 10% of what the market expected, but that's the market. As comparison, the first day of trading in the US, we saw 655 million as far as inflows, and that was for the ETF. Now we talked about this. I told, told everybody, you know, eat, Hong Kong is not the United States, and Hong Kong is not China. Hong Kong is just the proving ground to see if mainland China will actually pick it up, but it's not too bad. However, if you take a look at, uh, to verify this over here at Coindesk, leading crypto or Bitcoin uh, fell by market nearly 2% from 63.3 to under 61,000 in an hour to 0,900 UTC. The second largest crypto, which would be Ethereum, slipped almost 3% to 3,000. The six ETFs that commenced trading in Hong Kong on Tuesday fell far short of expectations. Combined trading volume of 11 million, a fraction of the expected 100 million. So yeah, that's what it is. And it just reminds me just about how volatile the markets actually are. And even though we say, well, there's smart money out there and they're gonna do all these things, I always just think it's not really smart money, it's just big money and they can do with the things that they wanna do. So on top of that, Eric Belchunas. And uh, Eric was, of course, a senior analyst from Bloomberg. He's the one that got it right for uh, him and his partner for the spot ETF. And he said in the beginning, he said, look, this is not gonna be that big. People think it's gonna be great, it's not. And he, said, and he gives some good facts. East versus West, the US did 740 million in assets and 4.6 billion in trading volume. These are far below that, but if you adjust for the size of the market, it's a different story. This is equivalent, again, Hong Kong, of 25 billion and 1.6 billion, which is nice to see, but it's still underperformed. Let's not, let's not all go and say, well, it was fantastic. It wasn't. 
it was not as great as we expected. For context, China AMC's Bitcoin ETF is already among the top 20 biggest in the market. And as I said in early tweets on Hong Kong, you have to understand it is 1 168 besides the US. And he says, what is this, an ETF mark for ants? Yes, it is. That said, Hong Kong ETFs, this is the part that, that confused me. Maybe you can help me in the comment section on this one. Hong Kong ETFs launched at a good time as US is slowing, which we know. So their 141 million plus inflows going to more than offset slightly negative US inflows. I'm not for sure about the 141 million. Again, sound off in the comment section, but from what I see so far, it's been pretty lackluster and nowhere near that 100 million, but this may be a different metric that Eric is using. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. That's the negative news. And this is why right now we've got a negative market because things are going on in Hong Kong, but that's only part of it. We've talked about this yesterday in the macro environment. It looks like we're running towards stagflation. GDP is uh, uh, lower than expectations. Inflation is going up. There's a uh, rumbling or talk of Jerome Powell actually raising rates, which doesn't seem too likely, but it's gonna be higher for longer. And of course the unemployment rate is going up. So when we take all these factors together, oh, and also the fact of World War III, you know, who never knows that's gonna happen. It makes people nervous. Oh, and one more thing, presidential election, November, I forgot about that one. So all you gotta do is just keep your cool, just stick around for the long haul. And usually the people that stick around uh, do pretty good. Again, timing the market is greater than timing the market. And yeah, let me just think about that in the comments section, but here's some good news. And there's always good news out there. If we just focus on the negative, it can be a pretty crappy day. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Coinbase rolls out lightning. I did not see this on my bingo card. I mean, they had made an announcement of this on April 3rd, I think it was, but I didn't expect them to actually do it. So congratulations to Coinbase for uh, integrating Lightning, which will make uh, Bitcoin transaction fees a fraction of what they are right now. And then uh, here's what we got. So previously, if you guys didn't use Coinbase, actually it's for every, every exchange, uh, the fees were astronomical. Bitcoin transfers on Coinbase were processed on-chain, meaning transactions could take place between 10 minutes and two hours, incurring high fees during periods of network congestion. The Lightning Network is essentially a layer two protocol. You have thousands of transactions, then they batch them and they stick them on the uh, uh, original or layer one for Bitcoin, and that one transaction is processed. So it's a pretty much a way just to kind of do transactions above the base layer, do a bunch of things and then stick it on the uh, 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 base layer itself with the Bitcoin, reduce the cost overall. I never understood why they didn't implement this sooner, and I think I understand why, and we'll get to that in a second. Uh, what we're going to talk about now is Victor Bunin, Boonin, Coinbase's protocol specialist and liking lightning integration for Coinbase. He says this, there is a 0.1% processing fee associated with lightning transactions on Coinbase for sends only, which should be processed with a few seconds. And now, I said this is great news, and it is great news. I'm really happy about this, but there's always a catch. And the catch is a couple of things. This is what Boonin says. Coinbase users will be limited to withdrawing a maximum of $2,000. I don't know if this is for 24 hours per transaction, seven days, not for sure. Just says withdrawing a maximum of $2,000, meaning the maximum withdrawal fee would be two bucks. Of course, because you can always you can only send out $2,000 per transaction. And then he said this, and this, were, this is where the Lightning Network kind of runs into some issues. A conservative limit was selected because although Lightning can support arbitrarily large Bitcoin sends like we just talked about, the average success rate of payments declines as the size of the payment increases. Now, I'm not a Lightning expert. I just like the whole low cost transaction fees, I love that part. But apparently for letting to work, you have to have certain connections between the different payor and the payees. And we don't have a lot of those connections. You see some more failed transactions in the Lightning Network. Again, please correct me in the comment section. That's just what I had read for Lightning and Boonin talks about it here. He states you had to set a lower limit at launch, which will improve our users' experience and can be adjusted based on user feedback and as liquidity on the network increases. So first we have to get the liquidity over there. But again, step in the right direction. To send Bitcoin globally, 
is now 20 times lower than the average 2% charge on credit card transactions. Visa, MasterCard, they're doing a great job of fees. And a fraction of a $30 paid for wire transfers. I don't know about you, but the wire transfers from bank to bank, uh, here in Puerto Rico, we just paid 125 bucks for a wire transfer. Just saying, banks gonna gotta wet their beak. The integration will enable users in supported regions to select between Lightning or the Bitcoin base layer for the withdrawals. So first of all, let's talk about this, the supported regions. There is a link in this article. We'll get to that in a second. Lightning Network integration is not available in all regions. We're rolling out support on a case-by-case -case basis. And when you go for the supported regions part, this is the part that got, that got me. It makes it look very simple for Lightning, and it should be very simple, but it doesn't really work like that because as far as like supported regions, they didn't say anything in here as far as what regions are supported. I'm going to guess America. In Puerto Rico, I couldn't use this option. And then when it talks about, well, all you got to do is just do this. Add your recipient's invoice, preview your send, and off you go. Because it's not as easy. Let me just say. It's not as easy as just picking, going, send me your Bitcoin address. I will send you Bitcoin on the Lightning Network. It doesn't work like that. To send via the Lightning differs from sending on the Bitcoin network as you'll need an invoice from the recipient to complete the transaction. So what you have to do here is you have to log into Coinbase, you have to click on transfer, you have to select the Bitcoin, you have to get an invoice, send it to the person, send me this much Bitcoin, they'll get on the Lightning network. Which I gotta tell you, it doesn't sound complex, it doesn't sound too bad, but it's kind of a little bit of a, of a way to kind of hinder things. So, I mean, this is great for Bitcoin and Coinbase and Lightning, but I think it'd be just great if we just send me a QR code, I'll send you some money on Bitcoin. Bam, there it is. And we don't have limits, we don't have regional issues, but again, this is just warming up. I think it's a step in the right direction and uh, we'll see where it all goes out, but I don't know why they had to make it that much complicated. Any other you want to think about that in the comments section, but on top of this, there is some other good news. Uh, Bitcoin transaction fees go down and Ethereum takes its rightful place as king transaction fee <laughs> because ruins speculation subsides. Now we did a uh, video a couple weeks ago about ruins and what that actually means. Ruins, if you're not familiar, is essentially they are tokens or meme coins on the Bitcoin base layer. And what's the difference between that and uh, arbitrals? Those are essentially NFTs. So when we're talking about these different things, just know that runes are essentially tokens. So what happened was there was a big uh, speculation that this was going to really take off. I thought it was going to take off. It really just didn't. And we're going to see here, actually, this isn't a good one. Uh, take a look at this. So these are Bitcoin and Ethereum average transaction fee. And in, in red is Ethereum. And in blue is Bitcoin. And you see over here, just past 2022, look at the average transaction fee for Ethereum. 100, $196 on this specific day. I think this was during the big merge, so you can't really say what it is, but usually the average transaction fee is about 50 bucks, 40, 30, and it goes down. And then of course, as we go into the bear market, no one uses Ethereum, or very little, so the transaction fees go down. Then as things heat up, they go up. And uh, that's where we're at for this place, but let me just zoom in here. This was the peak of speculation. April 19th was the Bitcoin halving. Once that happened, there was a lot of uh, ordinals, essentially, again, the NFTs on the Bitcoin blockchain, and also runes speculation, tokens, meme coins, and that took place the next day. And the Bitcoin average transaction fee was $128, and boy, were the maxis ticked off. But as time has gone on, it has subsided because people are like, yeah, this isn't really that big of a thing. I thought it was going to be. Didn't plan out. However, I will say this. For buying or having the runes, which was they actually had an NFT as well, uh, you, you could have gotten airdropped. And even today, for what people got airdropped for every rune they have, 889000 this dog go to the moon, it's still worth almost $3,000, but it'll probably drop because it's a speculative asset. But that's good news. I mean, we've got uh, less transaction fees, so that sounds good. And then to finish up, before we get into the Q&A, I'd like to say that as time goes on, just remember that um, you have assets. You have access to certain assets. 
And what you could start to think about doing would be to staking those assets because as you stake, of course, the APY could be pretty good. Depending on how you stake, if it's in a cold storage device or if it's a hot device or how the slashing rewards are uh, calculated, especially on Ethereum, I think it may be something for you to look into as far as like generating income as time goes on in this bearish sentiment until we hit an all-time, hopefully all-time highs coming up, but to actually stake things. And I want to give a shout out to um, my friend Steven, uh, which we do all the uh, meetups over at San Juan Smokehouse. I did not know this, and I should have known this long, a, a while ago, and I want to make this super simple for everybody. But you can stake for a lot of different things that you have, well, except for Bitcoin. You can do it for Ethereum, you can do it for Solana, you can do it for Cardano. We have a uh, Cardano stake pool, links in the description. Very simple to do, never leaves your wallet, very nice. Same thing here. There's a website called bonkrewards.com, and this has been verified. I've checked it out. Uh, and what it is, it's very simple. You can use what's called a phantom wallet, which is a hot wallet, and you can put your bonk in there. Again, I think bonk is the next Dogecoin, but I could be wrong. And then you just uh, connect it, and uh, you can put however much you want to. Now, let me make this crystal clear. You do not put your life savings into a meme coin. You do not put your life and every meme and every amount of meme coin that you have, you still don't put it on your phantom wallet. Does that make sense? Because if you do that, at some point, this is risky because you're at a hot wallet. Phantom is a hot wallet. It's prone or it's applicable that it could be hacked at some point. I'm not saying that it won't be hacked or it will be hacked. I'm just saying this is risky. And so as long as you know that and you want to stake your bonk like I do, because I'm just like, yeah, I have that a little bit here. The rest of it is on my Tangem wallet. Yes, you can put uh, bonk on a cold storage device like Tangem. Very simple, very easy. Got a video for it. Anyhow, all you got to do is download Phantom. Links in the description. You connect your bonk wallet. Very simple. And then you just decide, do I want to do it uh, one month, three months, or six months? And there's a, there's a rewards multiplier of 2x to 1x, whatever else. And you can try it. Before anybody asks, nobody paid me for this. This is just something I'm going to do, and I thought you might be interested in that. Also, if you're interested more about staking, there's a great website it's called Dan Teaches Crypto. And in, in that, there's a section just for staking of most of the different cryptos that are out there. Well, actually, I can't say most. I can say some because there's over 8,000 cryptos. So anyhow, check that out. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Also, if you're uh, thinking to yourself, well, I don't really like these, these hot wallets, just remember, Tangem, you can get a cold storage device, very simple to use, and in Q2, which is this quarter, they're going to be rolling out native staking, which is a lot different than staking through like a wallet connect or something like that. You'll be able to stake through your Tangem wallet. That's supposed to be happening in April, May, well, May or June. So link in the description, use the discount code. Or if you can't stand discount code, just go to Tangem.com. I don't, it's whatever you want to do. And then lastly, I'd like to give a shout out to uh, John Deaton. I know it's been... Uh, there's some people that just absolutely hate crypto and digital assets, and Senator Elizabeth Warren is one of those. I'm not a very political, this isn't a political channel. But I do respect John Deaton, especially for all the different hard work that he's done for the crypto community, digital assets, also for the uh, uh, Ripple community that he did during that uh, s the litigation between Ripple and the SEC. So I would like to ask if you aren't a big fan of Senator Elizabeth Warren or and or a fan of John Deaton, he's running for Senate in Massachusetts. And it's very simple to do. Let's uh, I'll give him how about 500, add 21 to sure. And you can do a whole different, different ways. You can do G Gmail, Gpay, or Antidote. Let's see, yes. Let's see if I can do PayPal. I gotta put this in. I can't show you guys that. Anyhow. We'll do this in the Q&A as everybody's asking me questions. Uh, and just put that in. There's a link in the description for this. I'm going to give John 500. Hopefully you can overthrow the person that absolutely hates crypto. And that's it for today. So look. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the, here's the link. And then lastly, in the Q&A, I want to talk to you about Tugger Carl Carlson. 
That's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up and start subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Thank you so much. Tomorrow I will be traveling, uh, so probably no video, but I'll catch up with everybody on Thursday as we do NFA Live with Guy from Coin Bureau and Ben from the Cryptoverse. But that's it for today. Thanks so much, everybody, for stopping by. I appreciate it.